All right, I'm going to make a video covering half of section 2.4. Before I start, you might want to, if you have access to a printer, you might want to print the 2.4 guided outline from Canvas, okay? Or just take notes on what I'm saying, and um, it might help you when you're trying to do the homework on 2.4. All right, so in 2.4, we're looking at applications of linear equations, but really we're primarily looking at just translating um, an English sentence into a um, mathematical equation. So I'm going to do about half of the problems on here. Sorry, that's my dog. Um, he likes these squeaky toys. All right, so let me start with question number two. So this first part, we're just dealing with... Um, how to come up with an expression representing a quantity, okay? So we know that John's test grade is five points less than twice Ariana's test grade. So first read, we know less than implies subtraction. We know twice is going to mean two times something, um, that kind of thing. All right, so then I'm going to go on and see what this sentence says. It says, if X represent Ariana's test grade. Okay, boy. If X represents Ariana's test grade, we're supposed to, sorry, write an expression for John's test grade. So we know that John's grade Sorry, I'm distracted. We know that John's grade is, and then right here is where I'm trying to write the expression they want me to write. So um, his test grade is related to Ariana's. We know we're going to let X be her test grade. So this is X. Her test grade is X. So we're going to take this phrase right here that we had originally and try to translate it. So I'm thinking, okay, X is Ariana's test grade. I back up, see the word twice. That would be two times X. Then I back up and I need five points less than that. So it would be 2x minus 5. This would be the expression you could use for John's test grade. So we're just doing a little bit more of that translating from the English into the math. Okay, so let me erase all this so you can see it better. So here's the phrase that we're actually trying to translate. Don't start with 5. Do a quick read to see less than, which is minus, twice, which is two times, but really where you start is with Ariana's test grade. We're letting that be X. Okay, so that's this. Then we back up to an operation word, twice. Twice means two times that, two times X. Then we back up and we get five points less than that, so five points less than 2x would be 2x minus 5, and the order matters, okay? All right, so let me go ahead and take a look at some of these other problems. So I'm going to look at number four next. All right, so 40 less than five times a number is 52 less than the number. Find the number. So you start with the question. The question is to find the number. They'll probably tell you what variable they want you to use. Let's suppose they tell you that you, you need to use n for the number, okay? Then what you're going to do, now listen to me on this and really try this because it really helps. When you read, look for where the equal sign goes. So 40 less than 5 times a number is 52 less than the number. That's the equal sign, okay? So then I'm looking at the phrase that's in front of that word, and I see a phrase that involves number, and then I look at the phrase afterwards, and I see a phrase that involves number, okay? So I'm going to translate each of those one at a time, okay? So let's look at the one in front first. So 40 less than 5 times a number. Start with the variable. Start with the number. Back up until you get 5 times that. That would be 5x. Then back up from there, I need 40 less than that. So that would be minus 40. So 5x minus 40 represents the phrase in front of the word is. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the phrase after the word is. I don't start with 52. I start with number. 
the number is X. I back up and I see I need 52 less than that. 52 less than X would be minus 52 after the fact. Only I was supposed to use N, so let me replace my X's with N's since I told you to use N for the number, okay? All right, so on these, the problems that you do are probably going to ask you to translate. So it might ask you to show how you translated it. That would be this, as is, with no solving of any kind. Then if they ask you to solve, that's when you go and do what you did on that quiz. And remember, you're supposed to be working on the process of solving. So we'll, we'd subtract the N from both sides, which would give us 4N here minus 40 equals a negative 52, okay? All right, then I'm going to wind up coming in and adding 40 to both sides, okay? And that would give me 4N here equals a negative 12, okay? So I'm, I'm sitting here with 4N equaling negative 12 right now. All right, so the last thing I'm going to do is get rid of the 4 being multiplied by the n by dividing by 4. And then that results with n equaling negative 3. Okay? So they'll probably ask you to translate, and that would be this piece. Then they'll ask you to solve the problem, and that's when you find out the number that would make it true. Okay? All right, let's try another one. Let's try number six. All right, here they're asking us for twice the difference of a number and eight, or they say twice the difference of a number and eight is 20, and our job is to find the number. Let's use N for the number. Read it and look for where the equal sign would go. Sometimes they'll use is, sometimes they'll say are, Sometimes they'll say is equal to. So look for whatever it could be that means equals. Then look to the right of the word as a phrase, and it turns out just to be 20. And then to the left of the word can be a phrase. And in this case, we've got to do some translating. All right, so now uh, when I try to translate a phrase, I'm trying to get you to think of it not left to right, but to read it, getting the gist of the operations involved. So when I see twice, I'm thinking two times. When I see difference, I'm thinking subtraction. What I'm going to start with is number. So I put, I think to myself, okay, the number is N. Now I back up until I grab that operation word difference. Now I need the difference of a number and eight. Difference of a number and eight would be N minus eight. Okay, now I'm going to back up even more until I hit twice. Now I need twice that. And if you just write 2 n minus 8 like that, you're not saying twice that, twice the difference. You have to put parentheses around the n minus 8 and do twice all of that. Okay, that would be the translating the English sentence into math. Okay, so that's the first part. Then you would start the solution process. Okay, so the solution process would involve you distributing. Okay, so when you do that, you'd wind up with 2n minus 16 equaling 20. So I'd have to add, a, a six, add 16 to both sides. And once I do that, I would have 2n equaling 36. And if 2n equals 36, I know I can divide by 2 on both sides. And that'll tell me that n has to be 18. Now look, your, part of your job is to learn this process because the numbers don't always turn out to be nice. You can't always guess and check your way to the answer to things that are real and complicated. If you don't ever learn this process, you're not going to make it. Plus, it takes too long, okay? And also, using apps like MathWay or PhotoMath to get the answer and then just showing me that that answer works is really not the point, okay?
Okay. The point is you taking time to learn the process and practicing it until it becomes second nature and almost automatic, very quick, very easy. Once you practice it a lot. All right. And then I put those other problems on the page or just translating from the English to the math. So I thought we might go ahead and do one that's just a little more than a little different, a little more than that. So here I have a carpenter who's going to cut a six foot board into two pieces. OK, so once I start hearing or reading something that I know I can draw, I do that. So here's my board, but it didn't say he's cutting it in half. It just said he's cutting it in two pieces. So don't put your cut in there yet. OK, now it says one piece must be three times as long as the other piece. So one piece is going to be longer than the other piece. Okay. So you got to think about that. So let me draw it so that one piece is short. I'm not trying to do it to scale. One piece is short. The other piece is longer. So one piece must be three times as long as the other piece. Okay. So if I let X, if I choose a variable like X, let X be the shorter piece, say. Then the longer piece can be written as an expression involving x. Here's where I get it. One piece must be. That means is. That means equals. So this is the longer piece right here. Okay. So the longer piece would be three times as long as the other piece. That's the shorter piece. So the other piece, the shorter piece, is what I have over here. Okay. So the shorter piece is my x. The longer one is three times that. So the longer one would be 3x. Three times the shorter one. Okay. All right, so what that means is it would actually look more like this. Okay, let me make it look to scale, more to scale. All right, so here's my shorter piece, and the idea is that my longer one would be three times longer. So this whole section here would be 3x in length from there to there. All right, and I'm supposed to find the length of each piece. I'm supposed to figure that out. So I can write an equation for this because remember this board we know is going to be six feet long. So the length of the shorter piece plus the length of the longer one would have to equal six. So if I add up one X and three X, I'd get four X has to be six. When I divide by four, that gives me that X would have to equal six fourths, which would reduce to be three halves, which is one and a half, which is 1.5 feet. Okay. Now they said, find the length of each piece. So that would be the shorter piece, wouldn't it? That's X. And we said X was the shorter piece. So that's the shorter piece. And then I would do three times that three times three halves or three times one and a half, three times 1.5. And if I did that, I would get 4.5 feet. And that would be the longer piece. Okay. So just a short video to give you some insights into translating from the English into the math. I'm going to go ahead and post that and we'll do a couple more of these in class on Monday.